Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca. Let's talk about makeup. We are doing February empties. Listen y'all, January was so chill. February was so busy. Last month, I did my January recap and I just put everything together. My low buy, no buy update, my empties, and all the new stuff that came into my collection. I just lumped that all together in like a January recap style thing. I really like that, but right now, I just don't have that kind of time. I just do not have that kind of time right now. So today, we're just gonna talk about my empties for last month, and then we will tackle the low buy update and the new stuff in my collection in another video. And I did like that format. It's just, it's a lot to sit down and do all in one go. And I just don't have that kind of time right now. So let's, speaking of not having that kind of time, <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So empties. Some of these are going to be spoilers for uh, my turn and burn. I don't remember which one's going up first, but I'm going to put those at the end. So I don't know if you care, <laughs> you can skip it. So this month we went through a few makeup or makeup adjacent type products. So we had a few of those. We had a lot of skincare. A lot of skincare empties and actually a few nail care type empties. I, ju I just don't go through nail stuff very often other than like nail files. I'm not going to put my nail files in here, okay? But I don't go through nail care stuff very often, so I figured I'd chuck it in here. Um, I, fe I feel like it was an accomplishment and I want to acknowledge the accomplishment. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the makeup, adjacent, makeup and makeup adjacent items first. I went through two setting sprays this month. Well, okay, I didn't use the entirety of these setting sprays in February. I just happened to finish them in February. One of them was my Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. She is donezo. I already have a backup waiting for me. Second was my Milani Make It Last Dewy Setting Spray. Oh, <laughs> I guess this is a spoiler for, <laughs> for deck of panning too. I pulled this in for a number of uses and actually just managed to finish the whole thing. There wasn't a ton left, so I suspected that might be the case. This is a very dewy setting spray. I don't, it claims to extend the wear of your makeup. I don't think that is the case, uh, but uh, it sure makes you dewy. <laughs> I was into this a few years ago. I'm not as into it anymore. And this is definitely something I can only wear in the winter because during the summertime, my skin does this all on its own. So uh, yeah, I am pleased to have finished that up. I also have this little NYX fill and fluff eyebrow pencil. It's one of those triangular ones. I remember hearing, gosh, who was it? I was listening to someone rant about these triangular pencils and I'm like, girl, I am with you. I am so with you. Listen, I don't see the purpose. Can someone tell me if you love this triangular te or teardrop shape, in a pencil, can you tell me why? <laughs> what am I missing? Um, this, for as far as this fill and fluff, I don't know, does NYX even make these anymore? I'm not sure if they do, but this is really a pomade in a pencil is what this is. And if that's what you're looking for, I think that you wouldn't mind that. They, it has this little funky little toothbrush on the end that seems pointless, but only if what you're looking for is a spoolie. However, what it's really, really good for actually is blending a pomade out into the front of the brow to do that ombre brow. Like if you're still doing the 2017 ombre brow and listen, if you can pull that brow off, it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I liked that brow. I wouldn't be mad if that brow came back. I like, I'm not gonna change how I do my brows. My brows are my brows. They will just, listen, I lived through the 90s. I learned some lessons and the lesson I learned is, I, I do my brows the way my brows want to be done. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not radically changing my brows for any trends, okay? But if the ombre brow is something that you like to do, I think this would actually be very useful for that purpose. For me, especially because it's in the shade black, I tend to prefer pencils that are black or to be perfectly honest, a soft black, like a deep gray color in order to fill in my brows. And that's because I only fill it, my brows in in certain spots. I'm not trying to color them completely in. I'm not trying to draw in a whole new brow. Um, and I want the parts that I fill in to match the rest of my brow. I have 
genuinely black brows. So if I have a if I have black brows and then I just have a little corner of brown up here, to me it just looks odd, okay? I've seen other people fill in their brows with a color that doesn't precisely match their brow hair color and it looks great on them. I have just never been able to figure out how to do that on myself. So I prefer black and this formula is just so creamy. I would 100% every single time end up with a brow much bolder than I was really looking for. So I didn't love it, but it is done and I am proud that I finished it. I have one other item here. It was in my bin and now it is not. I finished an eyeliner. I wanted to show you this eyeliner. I'm very proud of having finished this eyeliner. It is like gone, gone, but now it's for reals gone. I cannot find it. It's not in my bin. Listen, February has been a very busy month. There were, I have had a lot of work projects. I still have a lot of work projects that I'm in the middle of. And this place is kind of a disaster. I would show you, but it's embarrassing. <laughs> so I'm not totally surprised that I have misplaced this eyeliner. I might actually just, if I find it, I might just save it for next month's empties just to, so I can show you. I'm very proud of having finished this eyeliner, even though it wasn't there wasn't a ton of it left. It was in, in my 24 and 24, I showed you two brown eyeliners that I was counting as one product because one of them only just had a little bit left. And that's the one I finished, but still, I'm very pleased with that achievement of having finished that eyeliner. So imagine, got a little Rimmel, uh, I think it was a Rimmel Exaggerate? No, Scandalize? No, one of the two. It was the twist up kind of eyeliner in brown. She is done. I'm very pleased. Those are my makeup and makeup adjacent items. The rest of this is skincare. I'm going to separate out the ones that are in my turn and burn and I will save those for last. Here's one that is neither here nor there. And that is, I finished a tray of lashes. This actually takes me quite a long time because I don't wear strip lashes very often at all. I mostly used to wear strip lashes when I had not found a lash cluster that I really enjoyed. And uh, once I figured out the trick of putting them on, on the underside of my lash, that made a, I, the reason why I even got into putting these ones, these little lash clusters under my eyelashes is because I could never get the hang of a strip lash. I just couldn't do it. I, I just could never make that inside corner stick down. Not ever. It would always pop up every single freaking time. And I just couldn't deal with it. But I finally got through this tray of lashes. Took me forever. I bought it off of Amazon. It's got one left because I, uh, while applying them, I accidentally destroyed one. <laughs> and what am I gonna do with one lash? So this isn't empty as far as I'm concerned. I also finished my Dr. Brenner vitamin C serum with a vitamin E ferulic and hyaluronic acid. I think this is the fourth of these that I have, fourth or fifth of these that I've gone through. I go through them pretty regularly. This is a really solid, vitamin C serum. Um, I'm very pleased that I was able to get through this one before it turned orange. I have actually found that the amount in these, that one ounce is a little bit more than I can generally get through before it starts to turn. But I started using it on my hands, on the backs of my hands, because hey, the backs of our hands need skincare as well. And that helped me use up that last little bit before it started to become discolored enough that I knew that the vitamin C wasn't going to be super effective. Vitamin C is very unstable and as it oxidizes it tends to turn from clear to an orangey color and the clearer it is the more efficacy it's going to have and I like being able to monitor that. So generally speaking I have this on my subscribe and save uh, subscription from Amazon Prime and so it's delivered to me every month. However, I've paused that for this because I picked up uh, something else that I'm trying out. So I will probably eventually go back to this, but for now I have not purchased a new one. I also finished this Elemis Pro Collagen Rose Facial Oil. I don't use a ton of facial oil, mostly because I'm combo oily. I'm a little drier in the winter time and that is the only time that I maybe would reach for a facial oil. So this took me forever to get through. Also, word to the wise, I did really enjoy it. I did like it, but word to the wise, it is very strongly scented. I do enjoy a rose scent. If you don't enjoy a rose scent, then do not, do not like come within 15 feet of this, you're you're gonna need a restraining order. Even if you do like a rose scent, if very strong scents put you off, 
you also may want to steer, steer clear of this one because she potent. Oh my goodness. I also went through this little deluxe size of the Josie Marin Argan Daily Moisturizer SPF 47. This is a mineral moist, uh, a mineral sunscreen that I really enjoy. It's titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. I really like this. I have gone through multiple full size uh, bottles of this. It is a wintertime sunscreen for me for sure because it is very hydrating. And really that's the only time of the year that I can tolerate something with this much emollients in it. But I really do enjoy this. This is the non-tinted kind. I do personally prefer the tinted because this is a physical sunscreen and so it definitely can leave a cast. And also, I don't know if your skin does this, but my skin will do this thing where it becomes a weird shade of purple after really rubbing in sunscreen. What is with that? I really enjoyed it. I don't think I'm gonna buy a full size of this right now. I have some other sunscreens that I'm working through right now. My wintertime sunscreen is the Naturium sunscreen, which is gorgeous, very moisturizing. It is a chemical sunscreen. It's much more light lightweight on the skin. Uh, it does not sting my eyes. I'm um, really enjoying that one right now, but yeah, I really like this one, but don't plan to, I'm sure I will use, I'm sure I will purchase a full size of this again eventually, um, but I don't need to do that at the moment. I also finished up a Mandelic Acid 10% plus Hyaluronic Acid from The Ordinary. I really, really like this. My skin responds really, really well to acids. It is a little tricky for me to figure out how to fit acids into my skincare routine in between the tretinoin and the vitamin C that I'm using, but my skin does love acids. Most of the skin concerns that I have faced as an adult really started to improve when I was able to find the right acids to incorporate into my skincare routine. Really enjoyed this, we'll probably repurchase. I also finished a little deluxe size. This is a deluxe size, but it was not in my turn and burn. Um, this is the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Face Cream. Really enjoyed this. This was a nice little moisturizer. Definitely a wintertime uh, moisturizer for me. I don't think I would pay uh, the high-end price tag for this. Um, if I ever saw it at TJ Maxx or Marshalls or any other discount store, I almost certainly would pick it up though because it was lovely. Here I have a little one uh, use, little sachet of the Mad Hippie Advanced Skincare Vitamin A Serum. This is the type of skincare product I really feel like you need to use more than once in order to see any kind of improvement in your skin. But a sample like this is more for evaluating the experience of wearing it. Does it play well with your other skincare products or your makeup? Does the experience of putting it on is it pleasant? Does it have, it doesn't have any fragrance. It does smell a little funky. That's not uncommon with uh, products that don't have fragrance in them, but yeah, it was fine. It was fine. I don't think I'm in a hurry to go and purchase anything like this. I do use tretinoin. So that is pretty much all the vitamin A I really need. Then I also finished a package of these. This is the Shiseido facial cottons. Um, these, it took me actually quite a while to get through these little cotton pad situations. And that's because I don't wear a lot of toners and essences and serums. I tend to just decant into my hand and apply with my fingers. However, I have been using some toners in the last couple of months. And one of the things I have noticed is that these in particular don't soak up a lot of product. That's one of the beefs that I have with, you know, your usual cotton pad, cotton round situation is I feel like you waste an enormous amount of product that gets soaked into the cotton. Um, but these, these were really nice. I, I really didn't feel like they soaked up much product at all. And it felt a lot less wasteful to apply uh, products with these. Um, I definitely am not going to go out and pay full price. This was something I picked up at TJ Maxx. There's 40 of them in here and it cost me $3.50. If I saw them again in TJ Maxx, I would pick up another package because I really did enjoy them, but not enough to go out and pay full price for these. All right. I have some nail care items before we skip over to my turn and burn. So one of them that I finished was this is the Beatles gel nail polish. This is the type that you need a UV lamp for. It's pretty much the only type of uh, polish that I use these days. It is in the color B071. I have already repurchased a new bottle of this because it is my absolute favorite nude nail color. It's what I'm wearing right now. I love it. I will always 
always repurchase. I am pleased to have gone through one and definitely I've already cracked into the backup. Uh, from the same brand, and I, I just purchased Beatles uh, products off of Amazon. I also have a top coat by them. All done. I also finished, here's the Model Ones Builder Nail Gel. I use these to do an overlay over my uh, Epray Gel X soft gel full cover tips. That's what I use on my nails. And I like to use the overlay method. This is a really nice builder gel. Um, again, it requires a UV light to cure it. And it helps uh, give my nails more longevity and help them hold their shape a little bit, a bit better. I can usually wear my nails after doing my nails. They're usually good for three or four weeks unless I get bored, which happens fairly often. The longevity of my nails and the ability they have to hold their shape and you know how nails tend to soften and wear down on the corners as you wear them. Um, improved quite a bit after I started using this. This is a hard gel, FYI, which means you can only file it off. It will not soak off in acetone. I only use it on the top of my nails, and then I just file through that top layer and then soak the rest off, usually when I'm changing sets. I also went through a um, nail cuticle oil. <laughs> That's what it's called. This is a Bliss Kiss. This is the Bliss Kiss Simply Pure Hydrating Oil in the scent Crisp. Everybody was raving to me about the scent. I don't know. It's, it smelled fine. I really don't care what my <laughs> what my cuticle oil smells like, to be perfectly honest. Um, I am terrible at using cuticle oil, so I'm really pleased that I was able to get through this one. I, I broke it when I was trying to twist up the last bits of it, but it is finished. Um, I have already replaced it. I did not replace it with the same brand. I, it's a cuticle oil. Um, so I tried something new. It was fine. This one was fine. It was a cuticle oil. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. It was oily. Yeah, it did the job. The last few items I have here are for my turn and burn. So if my turn and burn update has already gone up, <laughs> I, I need to be a little more organized than this. If my turn and burn update has gone up, you will have already seen this. I apologize for the repetition, but for the rest of you, uh, I did finish a uh, deluxe size of this Glam Glow Bright Mud Dual Action Exfoliating Treatment. I don't, because I use so many actives on my face, I don't really have a whole lot of call for a lot of physical exfoliants. There are times, particularly more in the summertime, when my, you know, I'm sweating more and my oil production is higher that I do occasionally just feel like I just need to, uh, I just need to like scrub my face. And for that, I prefer the Kate Somerville Exfolicate. I know it's wildly expensive, but you can occasionally pick up a tube at TJ Maxx or Marshalls. And I use it only once in a while, so a tube of that will often last me more than a year. This was fine, but I didn't love it on my face, to be perfectly honest. I actually ended up really enjoying it, though, as a hand scrub. I ended up leaving this by my sink and then before washing my hands or after washing my hands, either one, I don't think it matters, <laughs> using this and giving my hands a quick scrub. My hands were so baby soft after I was done with this. You just follow it up with some hand cream, maybe some cuticle oil if you're feeling fancy. You know, it was really nice for that particular use. And I'm kind of sad that it's gone now. I, I was thinking when I first pulled it in my turn and burn. I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to use this up? I don't want to, I don't want to scrub my face. <laughs> I really enjoyed it on my hands. So if you have a sample of this that you're not looking forward to using it, try it on your hands. I imagine it would be nice on your feet too. I am not going to pay Glam Glow prices to, for a hand scrub personally. It's just not my jam, but I may look for a less expensive alternative because I really did enjoy that. Here is another one I cut open it was the Augustinus Bader, the rich cream, little deluxe size sample. When I pulled this in turn and burn, I was so excited. I'm kind of excited about this. My gosh, this is such a beautiful, beautiful moisturizer. I was so excited because I had used up a, a sample of this before in the winter time and it was gorgeous. It was such a beautifully hydrating, just it really really ticked all my boxes as a winter nighttime face cream face cream is that the normal way to say it moisture uh, just moisturizer <laughs> moisturizer nighttime moisturizer it really really ticked all of my boxes it was really very satisfying and so I was super excited to pull this out and wear it again however since I used that last sample 
But my memory of having used this was from when I lay, lived in a climate that was a little bit less dry than where I'm living right now. And you know what? It's not as good. I was a little disappointed the first night I used it and I woke up in the morning. I was like, huh, I don't, I don't know. I, I just didn't feel like it was as magical for me as it was the first time I used it. I do think it's the change in climate to be perfectly honest. So I am a little sad that I didn't enjoy the experience more. However, <laughs> It is kind of nice that now I don't have to pine over the full size of this because there is no world in which I, I can't remember the price. I will put it up here if I remember it. But this price, that, that is a price I am never, ever going to pay for moisturizer. Not ever. It is so far outside my price range. I'm not even sad about it. But now I don't even have to think about it at all. All right, I used up the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dew Drops. Um, this was fine. I, uh, I didn't dislike using it. I felt like it was a nice little layer of hydration. I don't know that niacinamide really does anything for my skin. I, I, I know it's the big it product right now, but I just, I have not noticed any positive change in my skin when using niacinamide. So I could take it or leave it. And I really, listen, watermelon scents just are not my favorite. I do not love a watermelon scent. Particularly this one is like an artificial watermelon scent. It smells like, yeah, it smells like watermelon Jolly Ranchers, basically. And I don't know. It, it wasn't hugely off-putting to me, but it was definitely not my favorite scent. I also used up the accompanying Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow PHA and BHA Pore Tight Toner. This was a nice toner. It was fine. Again, it had that watermelon scent. Except this one, this one was a little different though. This one smells like, smells a little different to me than the serum. For those of you who have this, confirm this for me. It smells a little different. To me, this smells a little bit like Watermelon Jolly Ranchers with cayenne. Just a little bit of cayenne pepper thrown in there. Looks spicy. Watermelon candy. <laughs> I don't know. But once you smell it, you can't unsmell it. It was not my favorite. I used up a little one use sachet of this Pucangule cleansing foam. And if I did not have so much cleanser on my hands right now, I would absolutely go pick up a full size of this because this was really nice. I enjoyed that. I used up a sachet of this Kerastase 8-Hour Magic Night Serum. This is for dry hair. It's like a little overnight mask for dry hair that you don't have to rinse out in the morning. And I don't have dry hair, uh, but I used it anyway, and I, I liked it. It I woke up the next morning. My hair felt very silky and soft. I just put it into the ends. Felt very silky and soft and nourished without being weighed down. I actually really enjoyed that. However... I don't think it's really a necessary thing in my hair care routine and definitely would not be pay paying Kerastase prices for a, a full-size bottle of this. Another one that I pulled in my turn and burn was this SF Glow Suns Out Pouts Out little lip. It's like a little sheet mask for your lips, which I thought was a little, <laughs> a little odd. I prefer my lip masks in the form of a balm, basically. I just, I don't know. It was fine. It was fine. Yes, my lips were hydrated. I didn't love the whole sheet mask on the lips concept or really the experience of it. It was fine. I, I would never go out of my way to purchase one of these. I really, really did enjoy the under eye counterpart, the little eye patches that uh, came along with this set. Really did like those. I completely, finally, finally, I worked on this January and February, I finally used up the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet uh, Skin Foundation samples. I, I made a little bit of a mistake. <laughs> I don't know if it was really a mistake, but I mixed all four of these shades together in a little 10 gram jar. Do I have it right here? Is this it? Yeah, I think this is it. A little 10, 10 gram jar. It is gone now. I ended up having to mix quite a bit of white mixer into it in order to lighten the shade enough so that I could wear it obviously because I did mix this darkest shade in there and so I ended up with quite a lot of product. I think it took me probably two to three weeks of pretty consistent use to finish 
up all of the product that I got in this little sample card. And that ain't bad. That is not bad um, for a free sample. So I really enjoyed it too. I have always kind of like stayed away from the matte velvet uh, foundation simply because I don't know, the matte velvet... I don't know. It's always scared me off a little bit. I'm not opposed to matte foundations. I have plenty of them, but I do prefer more of like a satin matte finish and matte velvet just seemed like matte matte. It seemed like super matte. And so I always stayed away from this, but I actually really did enjoy it. I, my foundation category is part of my low buy for this year. It's a replacement low buy. So I will have to use up one of what I already have in my foundation category before I'm permitted to buy a new foundation. But this is definitely one that I would consider when the time comes that I can, you know, decide that I want to buy a new foundation. I will definitely keep this one in mind. I finished up another, another card sample for Turn and Burn. I actually, I took it out to film my Turn and Burn update and I don't know what's happened to it, <laughs> but it was basically the Rare Beauty uh, Soft Touch Liquid Concealer, something, something, brightening concealer. I don't know. This is the Rare Beauty Concealer, and I took the three lightest shades and decanted it into this little jar here. It is empty. It was fine. I, I don't know. It, it was fine. I don't feel like it did enough for me as a concealer. I don't feel like it covered as much as I wanted a concealer to cover to justify. Like there are times when I just won't wear any concealer at all. But if I'm going to wear concealer, I want it to do a little bit more than the Rare Beauty Concealer does for me personally. So um, I only decanted the three lightest shades into that little jar. And then I promptly lost the other ones. <laughs> so give myself half a point for that. I have searched for them, but again, like I told you, this room is kind of a disaster right now. So I'm not surprised that I have misplaced a few things. Um, if I, if they do turn up, I will consider using the rest of them. I don't know. I'll probably just put them back in my sample a bag and maybe pull it in a future turn and burn. But for now, I'm calling this like half of an empty is, is what I'm calling that. That is all of my, oh wait, I have one more. Last, last, I use this Gucci, this Gucci uh, perfume sample. Um, it was really nice. I actually really enjoyed it. I prefer the opening notes on this perfume. So by the time it fully dries down and settles in, it is a little bit more heavily floral than I prefer. I wish there was a little bit more sweetness, a little bit more freshness, maybe something citrusy. Yeah, so it settles down a little bit more heavily floral than I personally prefer. I remember this was a perfume I was interested in buying because I tried it on in store, but then I decided to give it some time to let it settle in and see how the back notes uh, played. And I'm, I was really glad that I had done that because yeah, not overall, not my favorite, not my favorite. It's nice. I did not, it's nice. And I did not mind using this up. It was definitely, I preferred it over the Tom Ford Oud Wood that I had to, ended up going through and using as a closet spray <laughs> in January. This one was a lot easier to use, but I don't think I'm gonna run out and buy a full size. All right, did I get them all? Did, did we get them? Did we get them all? If I have missed anything, which I may have, <laughs> I'm just going to shove that into my March empties and we'll reconvene at the beginning of next month. So thank you so much for spending this time with me and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye. Can we talk about my eyeshadow for a second? Look at this. Do you see this? Do you see? Do you see this? I love it. Oh my gosh. I am so in love with the, this eye look. This is the Pat McGrath Sunlit Seduction Palette. And it is, this is why I love this palette so much. Listen, is it the most unique thing in the entire world? No. Could you recreate it with some other palette? Maybe a couple of other uh, Pat's own palettes? Absolutely. Does, does that fact make this less beautiful? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Not to me. I am so in love with this. Listen, I, it's bedtime now. I, I've got to take this off and I'm sad. I am sad. And isn't that the best? That is the best when my makeup turns out so well. I'm sad I have to take it off. That is 
the best thing ever. So I just wanted you to appreciate this. <laughs>